Yeah, De Belcher is a deck that mulligans a fair amount. It's it's got a fail rate to it. Mm. It's uh it's a has to mulligan deck though, not a gets to mulligan deck. Yeah, it's not it's Dredge, her teammate's deck, is a gets to mulligan deck. Yes, yes. Dredge loves mulliganing. I just do mulligan to five, still still win on the third turn, it's fine. Yep. All right, I'm just going to keep on five. She'll take a scry here. And frequently with the Belcher deck, you okay. keep a hand that's one card off and kind of hope you get there. It was a scry to the top. So Emma on the play. She'll start with Cataxium Probe. Force of Will, blue card. Yuck. So from, from <laughs> Levi, yeah. Forest blue card. What else? <laughs> Does anything else matter? Uh, Tarmogoyf, two Tarmogoyfs, a Nimble Mongoose, and two lands. This is actually a relatively weak hand. You don't like having these creature-heavy decks, in particular the creatures that don't pitch the Force of Will. But against Belcher, Force of Will, Stifle, that, that's enough. This is the very good opening hand. Uh, Emma's got to really consider how she plays this out from here. Draws a card. Yeah, I guess the question then would be, can she beat a Force of Will? She'll probe again. Frequently, the deck can't. Mm -hmm. If Levi forces the wrong thing, at the wrong spot in the chain, and she's going for Empty the Warrens. Yeah, Empty's really good here. She'll go for Lotus Petal. All right, that's the third spell of the turn. I mean, if it's Rite of Flame in her hand, I think it was kind of, yeah, Rite of Flame off red. So this would bring Emma up to two mana. If he waits, he could get punished. The remaining cards, looks like Desperate Ritual, Simeon Spirit Guide. If Emma resolves Desperate Ritual, that Empty's happening. So he has so to force this. he has this. to force this or the Desperate Ritual. Okay, but I think he'll force it. Yeah, I mean, and it looks like she earns the Force of Will on Rite of Flame. So this does leave Levi with just a hand of two lands, a Mongoose, and two Goyfs. There's no control. Mm -hmm. With the right draws, Emma can empty for a reasonable amount in a couple turns, but it's a precarious spot. Well, actually, against a, against a hand of... Two mongoose and two goifs. I mean, is empty good enough? Right? Well, like, he can just block them and. <laughs> against non thresholded mongooses, I would say that it could be. All right. Now, with Simeon Spirit Guide not being a ritual, given the fact that it's not a spell for Storm, this could be a spot where she's not able to empty for enough. Mongoose hits Emma down to 15. And there's Tarm Graph. So Levi will just play out his creatures on curve. Instant sorcery artifact currently. Not the biggest Tarmogoy if you've ever seen, but you generally only get to be about four or five out of the Delver deck of that Lotus Petal uh, presenting yeah. some additional power. Emma reloading one card at a time. With the amount of creatures Levi has in play, sh she's going to be looking for a Char Belcher turn. It would be nice. She has already drawn empty, though. Yeah. Which is not only the case, you know, you have to cast the cards you've drawn, but even if she produces Belcher, that's one card that's not a ritual for that sort of kill. Goyf and Mongoose both swing. So the Tarmogoyf currently a 3-4, so that will be put Emma down to 11. And here's another timer going. So seven damage. So we're looking at a two-turn clock from Levi. Mm -hmm. And let's see. If Levi has a lightning bolt in hand. This will be lethal on the following turn uh, because he can wasteland himself to put land in the graveyard. You're right, that is. So bolt Emma down to eight, waste himself. That's lethal. You're right. So it's one turn. Emma's got to kill him right now. I don't know that she can, though. Mm -hmm. Not getting game one in this matchup. I mean, right, she, she did successfully force a will check her opponent. The issue is that he passed. <laughs> yes. On a five card hand, for just a straight force of will check isn't even that bad. And you see Bolt down to eight. Mm -hmm. the, the win is on the board. The Belcher deck is not well known for its ability to reset, really. Swing. 
for seven. And it looks like he might give her an extra turn. Or just has it this way. Forked Bolt will seal it up. Game one to Levi Basham. That's one of the scary parts about Team Redelver. It's this nice mix of really low curve threats and control cards. And Levi doing just that, getting the early control, turning yep. the corner very quickly. They had the force of will to stop everything that Emma did in that game. And then just some creatures to close up the game quickly. So out of the sideboard from Emma, she's got four Xanted Swarms. We see that frequently in Belcher sideboards. And then a bunch of one-ofs. Diminishing Returns, Empty the Warrens, Goblin War Strike, Hull Breach, Infernal Tutor, Pyroclasm, Reanimate, Reverent Silence, Shattering Spree, Tendrils of Agony, and Trash for Treasure. Now, a lot of these might seem like weirdo cards, mainly because when you're a deck with one land in it, uh, the kind of cards you can actually play that do anything are, are pretty narrow. Um, I guess my first question is, is this a Xanted Swarm matchup? Yes. Um, you force your opponent to leave their lightning bolts into the into their deck. Lightning bolt's going to be a blank against your straight combo hand. It's going to be necessary against your Xanted Swarm draw. Right. Uh, whereas Levi certainly wants to get those fork bolts out of the deck, would prefer to board out a lightning bolt, be but can't because of the existence of Xanted Swarm. Right. So then looking at that, we have a bunch of things that, well, they do different things here. It's all just Burning Wish package. You know, the, the Pyroclasm is good in this matchup. Uh, theoretically, that one could come in, but yeah. mostly this stuff's only there to wish for. Is it better, if I want to, is it better to have it there to wish for or to have one in the deck? Using four mana to Pyroclasm is pretty bad, and it's disruptible the same way that you're combo. You're doing enough stuff to combo anyway, if that's what you're doing. Um, there's a good chance that that just comes into the deck for that reason. All right. Now, so Levi Basham, he's got a sideboard of his own. A lot of times decks get a lot better against Belcher after sideboard. Um, Ancient Grudge, Dismember, Red Elemental Blast, Rough Tumble, Flusterstorm, Grafdigger's Cage, Pithing Needle, Submerge, Sulfur Elemental, Surgical Extraction, and Sylvan Library. So this Flusterstorm is another way to deal with these rituals. That one's yeah, very good. That's Pithing great. Needle can st shut off the Char Belcher kill specifically. Um, usually, it depends on how much stuff so he wants to board out, like these forked bolts. I, I would usually trim on Goyf in this kind of matchup, and Sulfur Elemental is technically an upgrade because you don't want to use your mana at sorcery speed. Uh, right. So there's an argument for that over Tarmogoyf. Um, you'll see some players bring in Surgical Instraction in this kind of matchup. It's not terribly impactful. A rough Tumble's fine to deal with Goblin Tokens? Yeah, that's an option. All right. Yeah, there's not too much that's interactive here, so we'll be going. But that's how the. Teamers, teamers got a good setup for this matchup and just in the first place. Yeah, mo most of this is going to revolve around those blue cards, your Force of Wheels, your Spell Pierce. All right. So we're going to go to the second game. Now, one thing that we're going to debut over here on StarCityGames.com, you see over for Levi, is the Tarmo die. We've had this on our store recently. So we had to keep track of the power and toughness of a certain green creature that sees some play in Eternal formats. We have these sets of dice of four now available over on StarCityGames.com. So, yeah, let's you on the side just kind of keep track, you know, all the way from one, from zero, one, up to seven, eight, I believe. Eight, 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 nine, nine. eight, nine. Yeah, eight it's an eight-sided die, so you can get all, yeah, zero, one to eight, nine. So it actually does have, uh, well, it'll be one, it, has, it has just about every size for Tarmac Life <laughs> on it. I've never, <laughs> you can keep track of these in sets. So get one over at StarCityGames.com slash Tarmo die. Set of four because you get to play four Tarmogoyf. That's just good math. Yeah. I don't want the zero one on my die anyway because I, my Tarmogoyfs aren't going to be zero ones. <laughs> one would hope not. All right. Emma's going to start off this game on Elvish Spirit Guide into Tinder Wall on the first turns. So we're ready for a second game. She's kept a seven this time, which has got to be scary. But Levi also kept a seven, which suggests he's got Force Blue card again. I see that Force of Will hanging out. Simeon Spirit Guide, Seething Song on three. That's a good one to force a will. Yeah, so this is going to start to go to five. She's trying to turn one kill, but it's a force check again. Levi's going to pass again. Yeah, force pitching Delver of Secrets, and that's going to be a four for two. Emma's leftovers looks like Lion's Eye Diamond and Char Belcher and Anne, so she gets, has to get back up to the space where she can cast that Belcher in the first place. And another Delver from Levi. 
pitched one to Forceville, has another. So now Emma's looking to reload. She does have Goblin Char Belcher in her hand, but just passes. Drew Lion's Eye Diamond, which means if she can get the Belcher into play, activating it will be easy. Mm -hmm. Delver flips off Brainstorm. Clock ticking here, though. Levi's going to try to get another Force Blue card set up as he hits for three. When we get into this stage of the game, Spell Pierce and Stifle will often be good enough. So some good news, though, for Team of Handy, Humphreys, and Clumperens. Over in the standard match between Jadine and Marcus, it is Jadine Clumperens with Black White Zombies taking game number one. Looks like Jake Humphreys, we believe, up as well with Dredge. I assume it's not difficult for the Dredge deck to conflagrate Red White Prison out of the game. Remember, at the end, if this, ma if this game concludes, we will go to another game after that. Emma's attempting a land grant here. She shows her hand, Charbelcher, Xanted Swarm, Lion's Eye Diamond, Desperate Ritual. And it looks like Levi's just got her covered a couple of ways. Well, she's going to brainstorm. We'll see. He'd like to counter this one, uh, particularly if he's able to produce Spell Pierce. You can Spell Pierce land grab. You, you can't Spell Pierce Xanted Swarm. And unless he produces an answer to the swarm, then he can't spell pierce anything if he's able to come across one of those. So yeah. Her hand, Desperate Ritual, Xanted Swarm, Goblin Char Belcher, Lion's Eye Diamond. So she's still quite short on mana, right? You have to get up to four to cast Goblin Char Belcher. This land grant will get her the Taiga, the one land in her deck. Mm -hmm. So that's mana source one as she casts Santed Swarm. She has to find two more mana sources, at least one that can start the chain to cast Desperate Ritual. Right. The only real plus twos in the deck, well, Seething Song is a plus two, but that doesn't really do much. So uh, keep in mind that on top of finding Lightning Bolt to deal with the Swarm, Levi's also playing a Wasteland deck. Wastelanding off Taiga pushes sure. Emma even further back. Right, the only time they get plus twos is, you know, Rite of Flame can eventually be a plus two, though not right away. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he can do that. He's going to, Levi will complete the brainstorm here at the end step. Right, so, if, yeah, if he can't bolt the, the Xanted Swarm, he could waste away the mana instead. Right. Remember, he also has the Insectile Aberration going. So a couple ways for Levi to fight this one. We'll see where he goes. Looks like and draw of another land here. Does he have the wasteland? He'll start Kataxian Probe. Emma, Emma still has the same cards. <laughs> she cast that spell last turn. Land grant the old inverse Kataxian Probe. Now there's also a stifle in Levi's hand, which means if Emma does... Belcher, LED, he's got the first Belcher activation covered with Stifle. Once you get past that first Force of Will turn, the Delver deck just has a ton of answers, uh, just kind of up and down the curve, various different ways to interact with different aspects of the Belcher deck. So, like, the, the, the turn five wins out of Belcher don't come very much in this matchup. And just in general, there's <laughs> not really a matchup where Belcher's winning on turn five too often. Well, there are some, you know, post where there's some games where, where they, they can reload after the first turn and get you. Um, yeah. That's harder here, though. Right. Looks like we do have a judge question. Players are going to pause here. Levi just wanting to check on certain interactions. It's a good chance my read on the situation is it's Stifle versus Lion's Eye Diamond. Now, you can't Stifle Lion's Eye Diamond, is that right? It's a mana ability, I do believe. Even though, yeah. So you can't stifle the mana part of it. See so shuffling up there for a second game in modern are Jake Humphreys and John Pellman. So we're going to go back here to the match. Levi has returned to the table. He's deciding just how to keep control of the game. And it'll be back to Insectile Aberration attacking for three. And that'll put Emma down to 14. Passes the turn. 
And you mentioned he does have that stifle in hand. And he's very concerned. He's going to stifle the Xanted Swarm trigger. So that means he still can counter spells this turn. Now, Given the way that the math breaks down, this suggests an uncertainty on Levi's side about the composition of the Belcher deck. Was there any one card that Emma could have added there that made it this a lethal turn? Uh, to my knowledge, the only way to make two mana from nowhere is to ride a flame with one already in your graveyard, which she does not have access to currently. Right. It's you're right. So so he's kind of he's he's defending against the unknown. Mm -hmm. so he adds Tarmogoyf to his board. The better use of Stifle would be to stifle the the Belcher activation. I think if your plan was on stifling Xanted Swarm, you should leave back your three two blocker for it. Sure, especially if we have Tarmogoyf in hand. Right. Emma draws another card here. Now, if he stifles the Swarm Trigger, does that also suggest he has Force Blue card in hand? It suggests that he has some kind of interaction, right? Otherwise, he's just kind of throwing yeah. away a stifle. Here's his Anted Swarm again, and this is another one. So he continues to stifle the trigger. He only has one card left, though. And now Emma's drawn two more cards. She's at the threshold where she could combo next turn. Right. An attack here for seven puts Emma to four. So she only had, this might be her last chance. Oh, it looks like uh, Levi has picked up that lightning bolt, though. But he needs to have a counterspell with that last card. Maybe it's Flusterstorm. That would be mighty nice. Yeah, that's, that's the card that makes sense based on how he's played. Can Emma do it, though? She'll get Taxium Probe down to two. And he'll <laughs> just Flusterstorm it. That's going to be tough to beat. Well, if she already had the kill... Oh, no, he shows her the Fluster Storm. He didn't cast. Right. So here's Lion's Eye Diamond. Here's Right of Flame. Now, this is the third spell of the turn. Looks like Right of Flame will resolve. Emma's at two mana. She has another Right of Flame and some one mana way to produce more mana. mana. Let's say a Simeon Spirit Guide, Elvish Spirit Guide. I think the Fluster Storm is going to leave her a mana short here. Well, she certainly can't pay for the Fluster Storm, so she'll spend her two red to cast Desperate Ritual, and then he will Fluster Storm. I don't know if Emma can get up to enough mana in time. She'll probe again, and that will be the match. Last card was Burning Wish, so Emma yeah. was actually quite far away. E even if it all resolved... It wouldn't need to have been two more Rite of Flames, I'm pretty sure, to get the requisite amount of mana. Well, even then, it's not. She, she's out of mana. Well, she doesn't cast a Death Ritual. She just starts oh, casting, she just starts right casting of two more Rite of Flames. Right. But yeah, that is not to what had transpired. And yeah, that's kind of over a large number of games. I believe that Team Redelver will win the majority of matches here. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I think I agree with you. Uh, Force of Will plus blue card. It seems like it's very hard for Emma to recover from that board. Now, she did get some outs there due to some unfamiliarity on Levi's side, right. but wasn't able to convert. So her team is going to be down in a one-match hole here. Yep. Um, interesting, though, the throwbacks are talking about that, you know, how many people are approaching the Miracles banning. Emma's going to go play this really fast combo deck. Mm. Say, hey, Miracles is gone. The issue is that, you know, her opponent going back to Team Erdelver. Right. Something that also, like got worse as Miracles got big. You know, you saw, yeah. you saw Delver decks go bigger because to try to beat Miracles. The other problem for Delver was the popularity of Deathrite Shaman. Nimble yeah. Mongoose matches up pretty poorly against that card. <laughs> yeah, that's and true. And we see Levi was playing two Forked Bolt. No copies of Dismember in his main deck there. Sure. Um, that's a card that uh, you usually see as a one or two of in Team or Delver. Might be missing that if he runs into a Gurmag Angler. As a, someone who liked to play combo decks during that era, though, like Team or Delver is so good against the unfair part of the meta. It's That is what it preys on. So when, and Belcher fits right into that. Mm. Your worst matchups are going to be similar composed decks with creatures that are advantage against yours. You know, Death Ride Shaman. Or and like Death, Death of Taxes, Taxes was yeah. always the worst matchup <laughs> yeah. for Team or Delver by a wide margin. Yeah, but it, its combo matchups are great, and, and we saw that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to another match here. So that means the team of Clumperens, Handy, and uh, Humphreys are going to have to win the other two matches. It looks like we're going to go over to the standard match. This is where Jadeen Clumperens is playing Black White Zombies um, against the Marvel deck. So we're, we're going to bring you into that match. It's already underway. Move over to the standard tables. Right now, Humphreys, at, Comparins is at seven. She's playing Black White Zombies against Marcus Fitzgerald. Team or Etherworks, 26. So these things have gone the, the wrong direction for Jadeen at the moment. You see on, this is how we got to 26. You see Marcus's side of the board, uh, three copies of Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. 
been through a couple of sweepers at this point. See a Chandra Flame Collar and Sweltering Suns that have been exhausted at this point. There's a copy of Shielded Aether Thief there, which was taken down. And there is only one card in plan for Marcus. So Jadine's trying to remount pressure by bringing back an end step scrap heap scrounger, but she's got so far to go. 26 life, and it looks like on board, the possibility of nine more for Marcus. Mm -hmm. So Jadine swings, puts him down to 21. She went down to four when she cashed the anguish on making. This will be 20, actually. She does have Liliana's mastery on the battlefield. Oh, okay. So those are bigger. Yeah, it gets two Dark Salvations and it gets two more zombies. End step, Fitzgerald's just going to gain six life here, cracking two of the puzzle knots. Yeah, so back up to 26, but Janine's successfully antheming well. One Marvel could turn this around very quickly, but mm. she's gonna close the window faster than you might think. Yeah, Marcus would get several spins off of that. So Dark Salvation's anything that's up to one target creature, in case you're wondering how she got two zombies without a target. She just didn't choose a creature. So now this attack with creatures and shambling vent will be a trio of zombies for nine, and then a, two more guys will be 14. Marcus will go down to 12. Mm -hmm. Functionally 15 with that puzzle knot. Uh, about one more body here on JD inside. Could make a lethal attack on the following turn. Yeah, it's actually she's one short. That If she repeats the same attack, it is one short. Marcus goes back up to 15. She does have another Shambling Vent in play. If she can have the mana to activate it, Janine can present lethal. Mm -hmm. So let's see what Marcus has. Looks like he drew a copy of Ulamog. Quick land count, though, shows that he is too short. An Anthem effect here would be at Liliana's Mastery or Gideon Ally's yeah. and the car would do it here for Jadine. A basic land wins it even. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, an Anthem. Here's one Shambling Vent. Does she have another? No, it's going to be a swing for 14. She does have to give Marcus another turn. The land was tapped, and the last card is Transgress the Mind, so Ulamog's gone. And it's going to be hard for Marcus, even if he hits Marvel. I'm not sure he has a hit that wins. Here is Marvel. He has 22 energy. But if he hits, you know, Chandra Flame Collar, well, he can't even use it. Mm -hmm. I guess he could hit... Whirler Virtuoso to stay alive. That doesn't sound very good. Yeah, that would use a lot of energy to even yeah. survive for the turn. Yeah, it's not great. He has to block six attackers. Just going to activate the whole team and swing. So, so he goes down to 16 energy. There is an Ulamog. Rogue Refiner, Rogue Refiner, Marvel. And Ulamog's not going to be enough. No. Fitzgerald down to one. This board is way too wide for that. If he takes Marvel and goes again, he'll have 12 energy. If he hits Whirler Virtuoso, that is exactly six blockers, and he'll lose all his energy. But he'll, he'll get energy back from the Marvel. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> um, he stays. If he hits Marvel into Virtuoso, he can stay alive this turn, and that's about it. Jadine's life total is eight. Remember, she's been gaining life off these shambling vent hits. So here's another spin. There's the Virtuoso. And you know, I, I, twice he has hit Marvel into Ulamog, and twice he's had to pass. And even Virtuoso now with only 12 energy, it's only four Thopters. That's five blocks. Well, it makes three more when you play it. Oh, yes. That's exactly. No, it's, it keeps That's, him alive. That buys a turn. It does it. All our energy. It'll cost. So the, virtu the Virtuoso itself can run in front of Shambling Vent, so it can survive. Not that that's really worth very much. Well, you actually, hold on, Ryan. You might need it to die, because if you want six energy for your next Marvel spin, you got to have six <laughs> things die. <laughs> it's going to be tough. He's gone through at least Look. three of his puzzle knots already, right? So Look, it's not a great situation we're in here. It's a bad spot. So he's going to spend all the energy to make five Thopters. Now, I'm, I'm interested to see whether or not the Virtuoso is going to die. So, I don't know. If, so, Fitzgerald's empty-handed, can't spin Marvel next turn. Chandra's already not very good against this board because Jadine's attacking with two creature lands. She has the um, 
Scrappy Scroungers that can keep coming back, the Dread Wanderer that can well, keep coming back over time. Yeah, so Virtuoso stays alive. She chumps with the five Thopter. He chumps with the Thopters, gets five energy. So, well, actually, if what if he naturally draws Chandra right now? Then he would sweep the board, kill his, kill his own guy, mm -hmm. go up to six energy, and then if he marvels into Ulamog, then we have a game, right? Yeah, if he draws Chandra, marvels into Ulamog, he can win? That would be good. I know it's not good. <laughs> he also just oh, my goodness. That's, oh, that's my goodness. Chandra. That's Chandra. Okay, okay, hold on. He has just put, <laughs> he has just put two Ulamogs on the bottom of his deck. And one of them is in exile. Okay, so so that's and, bad. That's and his bad. deck only plays three. Uh, <laughs> so um, <laughs> these these are some problems. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean that is a problem. <laughs> uh, he could he could sweep the board, marvel into another Whirler Virtuoso, stay alive, and then I don't know. Then we're still we're still working. Yeah. Chandra's still alive. She only has to minus three to sweep the board. True. Then he can, like, no, 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 we got this. We got this. <laughs> then the next, he's going to hit. He, here's the Razor's Edge I, I'm seeing here. He can hit Chandra, kill everything. He has to marvel into another Virtuoso. Then needs to draw a tune, shuffle his deck, <laughs> make some energy, hit Ulamog the next turn. Well, he needs to get back up to a marvel activation worth of energy. Yeah, we'll figure that out. It's <laughs> fine. He'll draw a land, zero Chandra, draw Two attunes. No, we're still not rogue there. Rogue refiner, rogue refiner. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You, there you go. With That's ether. it. Two rogue refiners into a tune. Thank, thanks for finding the line. Yeah. Now the fun part about this line is that he has no control over whether it happens <laughs> or not. He <laughs> <laughs> just got. He has to hope. And Janie's not thinking. Well, she only can make two attackers. She doesn't know how many Ulamogs he plays. If she attacks and he gets Ulamog, I mean, she's going to lose. She she's know. at 10. She doesn't know how many Ulamogs he's seen. You know, she just kind of has to commit into it. Yeah. I mean, drawing Chandra was really good there. You see a deep breath on her side. Yeah, just one Shambling Vent going to attack. She may, looks like she has a follow-up play. But that does mean him marveling into something like this Harnessed Lightning is fine. He could also take Fourth Puzzle, Puzzle Knot. Knot. That's a, that's another activation. That's some life. I think I take Puzzle Knot then, right? It looks nice to me. Now, I wonder what Vent's attacking. Let's uh, Probably him. Yeah. <laughs> Planeswalker on one loyalty versus player on one life. I would likely elect to attack the well, player. Well, if he'd attacked the, the walker, it would be better with how <laughs> this worked out. If she had the read for this he exact had the read scenario. On puzzle, if she had the read on Puzzle Knot, she'd attack Chandra. Probably but would no. have attacked with both events. <laughs> he goes down to two. Puzzle Knot keeps Marcus alive. This is this is ridiculous. He's going to bring back the Dread Wanderer and leave up mana for Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay, she's assembling a board again. This makes sense. But three energy Mark and remember he can like zero the Chandra to redraw one card. No, no, he gets two. He just discards one and draws two. Oh yeah, yeah, it's plus one. You're right. Yeah, Chandra's good. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. A tune. Nice. Two more energy, and you can get rid of that land. Mm -hmm. And also those Ulamogs shuffle back in. They were all on the bottom of the deck. Can draw into some rogue refiners to make some energy. Oh, make goodness. a blocker. This, he's gonna get this. Oh, this is so good. This clawing back from behind. Marcus might even be ahead now. Oh my! So JD left up mana to rebuy the scrap heap scrounger. Yeah. And she still has two creature lands. Marcus played the forest. I, hmm. I would have zero. I don't know. You could have. That's gonna cost him a card if you wanted to zero that Chandra. Yeah, not big on playing that forest. It looks like he's gonna plus Chandra to make some three ones. Okay. No, that's a different line for sure. Yeah. Jadine's on twelve. The idea is try to get in for lethal damage. Okay. Okay. I don't mind him playing it this way. Once again, players in the ten a.m. So Jadine's going to go down to six on that attack. Unless, unless there's something more he can do. I guess if he marvels into another Chandra right now, doesn't he just win? 
Yeah, the uh, Scrap Keeps okay. Founder can't block. So he goes up to five, gets four more energy. No, that's interesting. Goes down to three. Yeah, he's trying to hit second Chandra. Seems to me that you would have wanted to... But you can't. ...wheel before you plus the Chandra. What, spin the Marvel, you mean? Yeah. But you can't, because if you see other Chandra, it's too late. Oh, yeah, you're right. Legend rule. Yeah. He did not okay. hit another Chandra, however. Given that that's the case, this, this line's a lot less inviting, right? Well, he may have just lost. So that would be the problem with the line. Yeah. Now, there are rogue refiners he can take here, but his Marvel's tapped. He has five mana left. Yes, he couldn't. And he already made his land drop, so he couldn't refine her into Chandra in any capacity. No, he could refine her into Marvel, however. True. And then he would legend rule the Marvel. He'd be up to seven yeah, energy. Yeah, yep. Uh, I believe we'll get a wording on Chandra, whether she sacrifice or exile the tokens. He, they may be a source of energy here, too, depending on how it reads. It's exile, so no. Or no, they just have to leave play, right? Doesn't matter. I has to hit a graveyard, yeah. So then you don't get, I don't believe you get energy. Uh, Fitzgerald was looking at Harness Lightning versus Rogue Refiner. Though it, getting rid of that dead, Dread Wanderer doesn't matter too terribly much. So he'll draw off Rogue Refiner. We didn't get a good look at the card. And it is the other Marvel. Jeez. This is up to seven energy. This young man Marcus should play is doing the lottery. It. All right, now can he get another Chandra? Six more. One, two, three, four. There it is. It's wow. the second Chandra Flame Caller. He's going to play it, legend rule it, make two more three ones. Unreal. What has this game been? Marcus Fitzgerald, he assembles the kill. He's going to send it to three. Huh. <laughs> that was that not was my the, expected That was the dirtiest conclusion. win. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What a play. Wow. I just <laughs> I'd like I would I would like to see someone go back and tell me the odds on what we just watched <laughs> actually happening. Well, well there was at first we had to top deck a Chandra, and that was our only card that saved us. Yeah. Then so that was rogue, good. Our rogue refiner, I think, just had to hit Marvel. <laughs> I don't know if we had any other card that won. Yep. Because you, you had to have the mana to still cast a Marvel. He only had one Marvel left, two Marvels left in his deck. So that was a two-outer. Mm -hmm. He only plays three Chandra. This is ridiculous. This is, it's really low. Uh, I would say we're sub-5%. Sub we're, you know, we're two, if I say sub-two, it's that we're two standard deviations into, into running, running good. And if we go back a little bit. Jadine <laughs> elected to attack with one Shambling event instead of two to make a bigger attack on the following turn. The way things transpired, if she chipped in with both, that would have been le lethal on that turn. Right, because he, he, uh, he got Puzzle Knot off the Marvel. Right. Wow. All right, so they're going to go to a third deciding game then, Black White Zombies versus Team Aetherworks. So over on StarCityGames.com, we have the Star City Games newsletter. That's something we run every every week. It's free in your mailbox. It's advice from some of the best writers and players on the SAG Tour. You also get highlights highlights from the articles of the week. You can get information about our upcoming events and an exclusive comic. And it's easy to, it's, it's free. So no reason not to sign up. It's starcitygames.com slash newsletter. Now, Jadine Compans, you mentioned playing the black-white build of zombies. And one of the reasons for that is cards like Anguished Unmaking, things like that a uh, Gideon ally of Zendikar. Mm -hmm. um, in this matchup, how much of that is helping her? Uh, so the white splash is, it's all right. Anguish I'm making, answer is Marvel if it's sticking around, answer is Ulamog if you're able to still win the game when it's on the table. Uh, so it's a good tool to have. It's also true that this um, Chandra Flamecaller build of Aetherworks Marvel is going to sweep your board a lot, which makes Gideon actually pretty valuable in this matchup. You want to be able to just generate power again and again. And this lets you do that with just one card. And, you know, typically, if you're bringing in Gideon, that, that that planes is kind of coming to the deck as well. Right. You the mana on casting Gideon is actually touchy in this deck. Mm -hmm. uh, they have eight dual lands, and they play eleven. Actually, Gideon's playing eleven five, eleven swamps, five planes. So she can board in the sixth planes. 
And both players keeping seven for our deciding game. Shambling Vent starting from Jadine. So we'll have her mana. It's a tune from Marcus. Let's say go. So now, as far as sweepers go, Marcus today playing looks like just those two sideboard copies of Sweltering Suns. And then the three Chandra Flame Callers in the main. Mm -hmm. Transgress the Mind from Jadine shows, well, a, a pretty land flooded hand. On Marcus's side, he's got lands two through five. He has an Attune, which is kind of like a sixth land. He has that Sweltering Suns, and then, of course, the copy of Aetherworks Marvel. For as good as these sweltering suns in, it's real is it's really hard to leave an Aetherworks Marvel in your Marvel opponent's hand. Right, especially on a hand where it's just kind of lands in Marvel. That's an easy take for Jadine. Also, Jadine hasn't been curving out with creatures, so she right. can really manage how she wants to commit into those sweltering suns. And Marcus drew another land for the turn, so he is in search of of really anything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, I think he only has one Ether Hub in those lands. So it leaves him energy shy of even activating Marvel if he draws it. I'm interested to see what he does with Sweltering Suns. It seems unlikely that he can ever cycle it in this matchup. Um, but if he really needs something like Marvel, maybe he will. On Jadine's side, she'll play, cast Lord of the Accursed as her first play here. It's the 2-3 Zombie Lord. There's some temptation to just... Sweltering Suns right now, because if you wait, two Lord of the Accursed are pretty good against that card. Yeah, if Jadine has a second one. It, unclear if Marcus can afford to just one for one, though. He has drawn another land this turn. So if he cast the Suns, he would actually be on only lands. Yeah. You know, Jadine, I guess there's a lot of stuff, though, right? Jadine could Gideon Emblem, or as you mentioned now, second Lord of the Accursed. She is Free, uh, now out of sweeper range. And with the way that she sequenced in the early game, you know, the Lord of the Accursed was her first play. Right. That's a kind of texture of an early game which suggests the high potential for a second Lord. Tap land from Marcus. His draw was a copy of Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. Well, that uh, hits him to the requisite energy to activate a Marvel if he draws one. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, the Marvel players can always turn around the game really fast. You know, a Marvel into Ulamog on the next turn probably wins. Mm -hmm. I guess Jadine has an anguished on making. She could kill the first one. It would still be rough. She'll swing for six. Putting Marcus back down to 14. And now this game, the stakes up here. Jake Humphreys winning game number two over John Pellman wins the match. So the entire team match is now going to be decided on this game. And that's good news for Jadine Klumperens as she makes Dark Salvation. And Fitzgerald really has to leave up activation for his puzzle knot here because any Anthem effect makes Jadine's attack lethal on the following turn. I believe it already is. It's already 14, 16 if you add in the Shambling Vent. So right now, he needs a puzzle. Right, she's already presenting 16. So yeah, he's got to leave up the puzzle knot. Yeah, he needs to have something plus puzzle knot to like even contend with what's happening. Well, he did play Chandra Flame. He drew Chandra Flame Caller that turn. He, what I like is how how well Jadine neutralized Sweltering Suns this game. There's just it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And if she puts Marcus to one with the vent. It doesn't really matter, does it? So he then sweeps the board with Chandra and loses to Vent on the next turn. He needs right. more. I guess by leaving up... Now there's no... She can just... I was going to say he left up the, the creature land, the 3-3. Three, three. But Jadine correctly swings into this. He cannot activate his land to kill the 2-3 because the zombies are exactly 14 damage. Mm -hmm. So if he, if he kills Shambling Vent, he loses. So... He may just have to crack Puzzle Knot. Then there's a the question of even if he hits Marvel, what can he realistically spin into here? 
Well, he already has the Chandra in his hand, and that's I, that's the best card he could have, but it's not good enough. Right. I want to go back to the turn you mentioned, where she played a Lord of the Accursed, and he said he might just have to Sweltering Suns it. You know, if he loses this game, he's going to lose with a Sweltering Suns in his hand. Right. And a turn where he did not spend three mana. So uh, you, I think that might have been well predicted. Yeah. I, I think that I, I don't know if this game is necessarily winnable if that's the play, but yeah. I think that that clearly was the play. Well, it might be the kind of thing that he need. In the, what Marcus chose was for to play. He needs her to not have the second one, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't think he can beat a second one anyway, even if he casts the Suns, then he's just going to play like she doesn't have it. Well, if my plan is for my opponent not to have something, and what I'm going to do is not cast or cycle my card, I don't think yeah. that's a great plan. So Marcus gains three, then goes to one. So now Chandra is not lethal. Or does not save him, rather. It can sweep, sure. Chandra can sweep the board, but Jane still has the creature land. Right. <laughs> yeah. No way to gain enough life to get out of this situation, either. Can only really realistically gain six on this turn cycle with another puzzle knot. Yeah, and Marcus extends the hand. And well played there by Jadine. 